Hey and welcome here to Python Learning by Doing. Today we will look at a little example I've made that um, takes a combo box. It's also called a drop down menu, but uh, I made a little page in Qt Designer where we have a, a combo box. And um, when people click that combo box, then these selection options we have there, I want them to be imported from a CSV file. Of course, you can make a you can make a, a string uh, or a list actually, uh, and then you can populate the combo box from there. But then it's fixed values. I want them to be populated in from a CSV file. So I have a CSV file with some rows in and some columns in, and I want to take all the values from column one and column three. And I want to take these column values, combine them into a string, and then I want that to be the selection choices you have in your combo box. So let's see how that can be done. Let's grab a cup of coffee. And then let's just get going. So as the very first thing I've opened my QT designer, and in Qt Designer, I've just made a simple window here, a main window, and I call it test combo 2.ui. And in that one, I have inserted two components, two widgets. One of them here is what's called a combo box. And you see it over here on the left menu. And you just drag this one up and put it here. And then I have a submit button as well. So that's the two components I have in there. I save it and then I convert it to a PI file. Um, we won't go through how to do that. You can find that in other videos uh, here on YouTube. And here in PyCharm, I have now my file here, the test combo2.py. And uh, that file looks something like this here. I've already added a lot of functionality, but we'll go through that later. But I also have another file here, the test combo. CSV, and uh, that's a file where I want to store my values in uh, when I have chosen a value I wanted to submit to that file. And then I've just opened another file here. You can see this one, main type 2csv and that's where I have some values that I want to be read out in my combo box. So this is basically the file where I want to pull the values from into my combo box. So let's see how we can do that. But first, let's try to take a look at what, is, what it is we want to achieve. So I'll try to run this test combo2.py. And you can see what happens here when I run it is that I get I have a combo box here. And if I click it, you can see it put pulls in the values over from my main type 2csv that's where these values come from and i have two fields actually you can see i have engine oil chains then a colon that's the first value from my list the first column value and the second column value is when do i need the task to be done by a certain date here so that people can go in and say, we have some maintenance tasks, some preventive maintenance, and now they need to see all the ones that are past due, and uh, then they need to be able to pick the right one and say, now I want to go in and register that I have done this task. So all these here gets populated from the CSV file. When you have done that, you basically, now we, we can just pick one here, let's say, uh, check tire pressure we take the last one there on the list and when i've done that i can say submit and now let's go over here in the file we submit to and see here check tire pressure to be done by this and this date and i can try to make another one just for for the example so you can see we add to the list we can say ac cleaning submit and then the value AC cleaning shows up in my CSV file. So the drop down values are in this file, the submitted values I select ends up in this file. And this here is the test combo. That's my file where it all happens in. 
So let's try to open this text or test combo 2. That's a file where I have the combo box in. And uh, then let's look a bit about how to create that functionality. Um, the first thing I do here is in line 1, I just write import CSV because we will use that functionality. We want to read the data in from a CSV file. So that's the first thing to put here in the beginning. Then let's go further down here and I go down to, you can see where it starts talking about combo box because it's the combo box functionality we want to add something to. And uh, when I get here to the end of the combo box, uh, and it starts with a push button down here, you can see in the bottom. But right here, when the combo, combo box ends, I add some empty lines, and now I start filling all this code here in. And let's try to go through it step by step. See, the first thing I do is I have to populate the combo box with data from the CSV file. And to do that, I will use a for loop method. So I want to do some loops here, and let's try to, to look at how that works. So the very first thing I do is I create some uh, empty lists um, and set them equal to nothing. So th these are simply empty lists. And these lists, these are the ones over from my main type, maintenance type. You can see up here in the header, I have maintenance type, I have frequency for the maintenance task, I have the start date, and I have the end date. So this here is basically like a table with rows and columns. So you can see all the maintenance types, these are the ones that comes until the first comma. And then after that we have frequency, you can say 365, that's one year interval, this one has 180, this one has 30, so that's column 2, and so on. So we have four columns in this table here, in this CSV file. So these are the ones I define over here. One variable for each input that I will, I will put in. I create, create a list for each variable and set them in empty. That's the first thing I've done. The next thing here, some of them I've hashed out because I won't use them all, uh, really. I, I want to use the maintenance type and the start time, type, start date. And then I want a combo, but that's where I combine the maintenance type with the start date into another list, separate, because that's the one I want to show. Then, as a second step, I have to open the CSV file and store the data to a variable. And that we simply do with, with open and then the maintenance type dot csv comma r for readable as a file and then i define a new variable here called maintenance category maintenance underscore cat and i set it equal to the content from the csv dot reader file so now we read the content from the csv file into that variable maintenance underscore category and then I have said print maintenance category. We don't really need that, but that's just to have it printed if we try to execute it. I'll just hash it out for now. We don't really need it. The next step here is to create a for loop because uh, I defined these four variables up higher. And now we want to run through this whole file, all the lines for each line in it. I want to read the column value into these variables I defined up top, up on top. So for all rows in the maintenance category file, I want to define one list here, and that list maintenance type dot append has to append from row column zero, row column zero. That's the first one over here. So that's the maintenance type. So engine oil chains, AC cleaning, windshield wipe. That's column zero. The next is the frequency. 
I can read that over. I can read all, f all four columns out. But I really only want to use two of them to show up in my, in my combo box. And that's the maintenance type. And it's the start date append. So I made the other ones. I can pull them. But I've just hashed them out for now. Because I really don't want them in my combo box. But I could, in reality, I could get the content of the entire row read into the combo box, but I just want certain column values. And that's the maintenance type and the start date that is in row two. Then I define a, a third uh, combo input down here. That's another uh, list that I create. And in that one, I combine uh, the values from row zero with the values from row two. And in between, I put some text here. So after after row zero, that's the maintenance type, I want a colon. And then I want a little space. And then I want the text to say, to be done by, and then row two. And at this point here, let's just try to run the program and see that we actually got the values read into this list here. So let's just try to run it. And you can see down here, I just made a, made a print statement in the program. And you can see here are all my values. I get the maintenance type, and then to be done by, and then the date. I got them all read over here. So now the next thing we need to do is basically to take these values and we need to load them into the combo box. So that's the next step. So I have my combo input append. And uh, I have my combo box here. So I add self combo box add items. And it's the combo input list I want in there. That's the one that combined the content of row zero and row two. And you see, this is why I do the for loop. Because now with the for loop and then for every row it reads through reading the column values into different lists. Now I can pick and choose. You can see I have I have taken some here and I have hashed them out because I don't want them to show in my combo list. But I can pick and choose what it is, which which part of the content, which column values I want to show in the in the combo list. And I can just add them here. So I have added row one, oh, row zero, and row two, but I could also have taken row one or row four or whatever. Uh, that that's that's all up to yourself here. And uh, now I have added it the combo input here to the combo box, and I said the print combo input. That's why we could see it printed down here in the bottom. But now we are basically ready. Uh, the only thing we need now is we need to make an onclick function, and I do down I do that down here. So I now go down to my push button, and at the end where I have any, everything with my push button, I add this line here: self push button dot clicked connect self, and then I have made a function called submit fields. So now I want to do something with these values. When I select a value in my combo box, I want to be able to submit it to a file or to another page. In this example, I just chose to make a function that writes them to a, to a CSV file. And that function I put all the way up in top here. So here I have my function called submit fields. And uh, I set a variable maintenance tasks equal to self combo box current text. That's the value selected in the combo field. And uh, now I open the CSV file and write the variables to the CSV file when I click. So I said file variable equal to open and then the combo box dot CSV. That was this one here that I write to. And I have the append statement and then file write and then a new line for every entry and then write main maintenance task and then file close.
So that's basically the whole function here. Uh, and what I end up with when I do all this here is this functionality. You can see here I read in maintenance types. I have the whole list. I can pick my AC cleaning, for instance, and I can say submit. And I can go here to my, my uh, test combo and AC cleaning to be done. And then the date is here now. So that's how to read the content from the different columns in a three di uh, two dimensional CSV file. This one, I can read these column values into lists by using a for loop. And now I can make them show in a combo box and I can submit them and use them elsewhere. I hope you really enjoyed this video here from Python Learning by Doing. Uh, if you did, and if you found this helpful, please hit the like and the subscribe buttons uh, so that we can continue to make more videos like this. That would help me out a lot. So thank you in advance. Also check out the links here on the screen. Um, there will be links to other videos from Python Learning by Doing. And uh, I can promise you there will be a lot of good tips and tricks for how to improve your, your programming skills. Thank you for watching.